So I've been doing speed paints both with voiceovers and non-voiceovers for years now and I did have a couple of videos on making speed paints but I didn't really go too much into detail about certain things and also I didn't like how I separated everything into multiple videos so I'm going to put all of my advice and stuff in this one video just to make it easier so I'm just going to get right into it. I'm going to focus mostly on digital speed paints but I will be giving you advice on traditional art as well. So first I want to talk about recording. So if you're doing a digital piece of work and it comes to recording, um, there are a lot of free screen recording programs out there. I currently use OBS. It is free and it took a while for me to get used to but there are a lot of tutorials online. A lot of computers do come with their own screen recording program though. I think the first computer I used for speed paints, I think you can record using like media player or something like that and uh, with my old 2013 MacBook Pro, I was able to record using QuickTime. So yeah, I mean, check your computer first to see if there's anything free in there. But if not, there's a lot of stuff online that you can use. I do want to mention that sometimes recording your computer screen does cause some lagging. This could be due to the program or the art program. Um, you can try different programs to see if that helps. If not, I recommend giving your computer a lot of breaks. Um, record for a few minutes, maybe like 10 minutes at a time and stop, let your computer rest for a little bit. My computer used to overheat a lot, so that's what I tend to do, especially during the summer when the room is actually really warm, the computer gets warm faster and so I have to take a lot of breaks during then. Um, sometimes what helps is when it's lagging, sometimes it's just an art program so you can lower the pens what is the term for it? Like accuracy? You know how the smoothness of lines? <laughs> Sometimes if you lower that a little bit, that will help. But honestly, when I was first starting, the lagging was so bad that I would just avoid doing like very, um, like parts of the artwork that required a lot of smoothness, I guess, and accuracy. So I would do the, I would do sometimes a sketch I would record that and then I do the line art without recording because that's when I would need all of the accuracy and then I'd come back and record all the coloring and stuff. So if that's what helps you or you know if that's what is easiest for you, go ahead and do that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, if you really do want to get the whole process down, just try different art programs or sorry, recording programs, see how that works out. Also when it comes to screen recording, do figure out how much of the screen you want to record. So when I first started, I would record like the whole screen, which is just fine. But sometimes there's stuff on the screen that really isn't necessary. So now when I do screen recording, depending on the video, I'll record certain parts of the screen. So if it's just a speed paint, I'll mostly record like most of the screen is the canvas because that's kind of what's important. But if I'm doing like a tutorial or something like that, I will record the whole screen. So most of the screen recording programs out there will allow you to highlight, you know, the area of the screen that you want to record. So keep that in mind if that's something that's important to you. When it comes to recording art that is traditional, so you know, like pencil, paper, paint, whatever, um, if you don't have a camera, that's fine as well. You're going to notice that for a lot of my advice, it's going to start with um, use whatever you have on you, I guess, or you know, whatever you have to work with. Don't go out and buy stuff immediately. Figure out how it works, see if it's something you'd like to do, and then you can go buy the materials. But yeah, so if you want to record something, you know, physically, if you don't have a camera, phone cameras have pretty good quality now. Um, I would suggest getting a phone tripod if you can afford it. There are a lot of really cheap phone, iPod, iPod, tripod things that you can attach to your desk. Um, you can like, uh, what is it? You can like shape them so they're looking down on whatever you're working on. If you are using a camera, go ahead and use an actual tripod. I suggest maybe like um, the view, depending if it's like a canvas, like a flat canvas that you're working on when it's flat on a table, try to get an angle that is directly above it. But I personally cannot get that angle. I don't have the tripod for that. Um, but yeah, just, you know, try different angles, see which one works, whatever is getting most of the process in the 
in the screen whatever's been captured god i don't even know what i'm saying also when it comes to lighting lighting is very important for these types of videos i will always suggest natural lighting natural lighting is gorgeous if you can't have that it's good to have you know any lights on if you can afford a i use a ring light but there are a lot of lights out there that are way cheaper than that obviously white light is my preference i really like white light um but sometimes it can be too bright when you're working with very light colors and sketches and stuff like that so figure out how that is being captured on camera but yeah you can never go wrong with natural lighting i will always fight for natural lighting what is yeah, i really don't know any words do i all right so you have recorded your process good for you that's great make sure if you can this is a tip to save all of your videos somewhere easy where you will always find them if you are able to name the files go ahead and name them in order just make it as easy as possible for your future self you will be very thankful um so time for editing the video most computers i think i don't know most of the computers i've had have come with a video editing program already in there um, when I first started, that's what I used. I, you know, you don't really need a lot of special effects for speed paints. All you need to do is be able to put videos in there, speed it up, put some audio, and you're done. That's all you really need. Unless you want to get really fancy with it, maybe you'll need something else. But really, free programs, way to go. I think I used to use, like, I forgot the Windows one, but with my mac i used to use imovie and i used that for the longest time but now i currently use adobe premiere and it's okay it's not bad but i am looking into different um options especially hearing all the things about adobe which i don't want to get into but yeah so when it comes to editing a speed paint um, I don't do a lot of special effects as you've seen, so I'm just going to tell you the very basic steps. And if you want to go above that, go ahead and look for other tutorials on certain effects and stuff. But, you know, you're going to drag all your videos into the project window. Um, iMovie has this as well, that's all I know. And then you drag those videos onto your timeline. And you will, if there's any, like, audio that was recorded with that, um, you can delete that. And then it's time to speed up the videos. So for Adobe Premiere, I just right click. I think that's the term. I just right click it and then choose speed and duration. And then I speed it up like 500% or a thousand percent. It depends on how long I want the video. So if I really want the video to be like 10 minutes long, I'll, I'll just, you know, mess around with the certain speeds and see, you know, what gets around 10 minutes. Um, I suggest maybe nothing too long it depends on what it is so when it's a voiceover speed paint and i have something if i have like a lot to say it'll be a little bit longer but i try to re remain around the 10 minute mark maybe a little more maybe a little less um but yeah so figure out how long you want the video to be speed up the video to that delete or erase all of the empty spaces in between there always i mean i guess not always but yeah yeah you know what you should probably always have the finished product at the end of the video this is something i forget to do sometimes and i feel really bad about it because a lot of people like to watch a speed paint for the final product that makes sense i don't know why i forget still but yeah get your finished product at the end of the video if it's a digital artwork you know have it zoom in maybe get different like slideshowy kind of things if it's something like a traditional artwork, maybe get different angles in there. But yeah, always try to have your finished product at the end of the video. That is what people are watching for. So yeah, don't forget like I do. <laughs> now it's time for the audio. So you can choose to either have a voice over speed paint, which is what, you know, voice over talking over the speed paint. You can do just music. You can do music and voiceover or, you know, half voiceover, half music. There's a lot of things you can do. So for voiceover... Um, recording audio, there are a lot of free audio recording programs out there. I use Audacity. Is that what it's called? It sure is. Audacity? Yeah, sure. So that is a free program that I've been using for years and years and years. It has never <laughs> done me wrong, so I do suggest that. But there are a lot of other programs if that's not something you like. If you don't want to use your computer, you can use your phone. Um, if you have an iPhone, you have like that, what is it, like that voice recording thing. I forgot, some audio recording thing. I forgot the name of it. 
and I'm sure other phones have their own version of that, but you will be surprised of how, you know, good the quality of that microphone is. It's really not bad. I've recorded a few videos using, like, um, my AirPods connected to my phone, and if you can't afford AirPods, that's fine. You don't have to use AirPods. It's just the phone at a good uh, distance from your face is pretty good, or using earphones with microphones on them, that's fine as well. You can actually buy microphones that attach to your phone as well. There's so many options out there. And speaking of microphones, should you buy one? Maybe, depending on how serious you want to get into it. In the beginning, I used to just use the microphone that was on my computer, but it wasn't the best quality. There was a lot of background noise, and since it was attached to my computer, you would be able to hear the computer fans. So that wasn't a really good background noise. Um, but you know, if you can't afford to buy a microphone, that's just fine, seriously. Try it out, see how the quality is. And like I said, if you have a phone that records just audio by itself, it's probably gonna be better quality than your computer. Just email yourself that audio file and then open it on your computer and save it there. Or you can um, down or what is it? Yeah, like download that audio file onto like Google Drive or something like that, and then open it to your computer. There's a lot of ways to transfer the audio file onto your computer. I personally just email myself. Uh, but yeah, so do you have to buy a microphone? Probably not. But if you, it's something that you really want to be, you know, serious about. There's a lot of microphones that aren't that expensive. Um, the microphone I use, I think I use a Yeti. I think it was like $120 or something like that, which is a little pricier for sure. Um, but there are a lot of more expensive microphones out there. And there's a lot of cheaper microphones out there. Just do your research. Lots of reviews online. Um, but yeah, research, research, research. Seriously, try not to spend money on something that has terrible reviews if you can, you know, if you can avoid it. When it comes to actually recording your talking, um... You can either record your talking during the whole art process or after. So when you're doing like ma like a tutorial, sometimes, um, like when I do a tutorial, okay, that's what I'll say. So when I'm doing like a tutorial, I will sometimes talk during the whole drawing thing just because it's easier for me to get my thoughts out while I'm actually doing it. But for most of my videos, I draw first, record it and stuff, put it together and then I record myself talking about whatever I'm drawing or whatever the topic is. It's just easier for me that way. But if you re prefer to record while doing the actual drawing, that's fine too. I do notice that doing that does make my computer lag just because it's recording my audio and it's recording my screen. So my computer doesn't really like that too much. Um, <laughs> if your computer is better than mine, go ahead and do that. Um, it's also easier for me to edit everything if the audio and video is completely separate like at separate times there's not a lot of empty space or you know silent spaces in between that I have to worry about so I just prefer doing it at a completely separate time it's all up to you don't even worry about it I don't even watch the video while I'm recording because again it just makes my computer too slow but yeah tips 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 for recording your voice be expressive if you can so for the longest time, I used to just record my voice while sitting down, but I learned from James, um, the, odd, the, the odd ones out, that uh, he stands while recording his voice <laughs> or voiceover, and uh, it just helps him with being more expressive, and it works for me. It's just way easier for me to record myself while standing up. I'm able to move my hands and arms around more. I just feel like I have more energy when I do it this way as well. Um, so if you are able to stand, go ahead and do that. Or just find some kind of position where you're able to express yourself more physically uh, while you talk. <laughs> it, it feels kind of silly, but it does work, trust me. Um, drink lots of water. Um, if you're talking for a long time, water is very good for your throat. Make sure you're relaxed and do a lot of deep breathing. Um, I need to do some throat exercises just because there are some times where I am just so like strained that my throat will, <laughs> will burn when I record and that is not okay. Luckily, the whole standing up thing has helped with that a lot. But if you do notice that your throat is hurting from recording, look up um, like, you know, talking and singing techniques. Um, find a way to relax yourself. Make sure just 
just calm yourself. I don't have any really good ideas or suggestions for that just because I don't really know what helps with that too much. But um, there's a lot of resources out there. But yeah, do not harm yourself in order to make a video, please. <laughs> And one other thing I do want to mention about voiceover is that if you're first starting out, you may hate your voice a little bit. When I first started making videos, um, every time I had to edit my videos, I, I hated it. I would dread it because I'd have to listen to myself talk for God knows how long and I hated my voice. But I promise you it does get easier with time. And I don't want to speak for everyone just because I know everyone is living through different situations where your voice is something you genuinely hate due to like, you know, gender dysphoria or something like that. And I, I really can't speak for you there. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. But if you don't suffer from that and it's just something, if your voice is just something that you're uncomfortable with, but for, a, you know, a not so big reason, I promise you that just hearing your voice for long enough will get will help you get over that reaction of not liking your voice um so yeah just keep doing it muscle through it i promise you it'll get better if you don't want to do any voiceovers don't worry you can add music i do suggest you use copyright free uh or royalty free music just so that you don't get in trouble with youtube um <laughs> and especially if you want to monetize your stuff eventually that will help you. There are a lot of websites that have royalty-free music and YouTube themselves have the audio library. Is that what it's called? Something like that. Uh, where YouTube has a bunch of music that you can use and like all of it is royalty-free, I think. There are some artists that do require you to copy and paste um, their like, <laughs> is credentials a word? Their credits into your video description. Um, although in my opinion, I feel like you should always credit the music you use. I just feel like if you want people to credit your artwork, you should credit people's music. It is a form of art. So I do suggest that. Uh, but yeah, royalty free music. Make sure, I mean, you don't have to make sure, but I do suggest that the music fits the theme of the artwork. Um, which yeah, lots of stuff like that out there. And, uh, yeah, just add that onto your timeline under underneath the video the screen recording make sure it doesn't go past the screen recording or else it's gonna have you know that black screen with just music at the end of the video and that's no fun uh but yeah i think that is pretty much everything i wanted to go over i hope this was easy to follow and I hope this was just helpful overall. I'm just really happy to have all of this information out in one video and I got to go more into personal tips and stuff. So yeah, if you guys do plan on doing speed paints, I wish you luck. They are a lot of fun. I'm so glad to have all of my art process recorded and online in case I ever want to watch my old stuff and see my progress and stuff like that. I love it. So yeah, I 100% suggest you try a speed paint at least once. And if you do voice over speed paints, please let me know in the comments down below because I feel like they're not very popular and I would like them to be more popular. Okay. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please be good outlets and I will see you guys next time. Bye.